it's just when I started going on stage. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session. Um, hello, Monique. Welcome to the uh, to today's webinar. We'll get going in about uh, seven minutes or so. Um, I'll, most people jump on right on the dot. Um, <laughs> But, um, that's very, very interesting. It's um, we're looking forward to get started and um, talk about how you can import your own data into the org chart, even as part of a trial, which um, Jesse is happy to organize with our clients to offer a free trial. Um, but that would include even importing your own data so you can really a play with it with the real data and get an, a, a real idea about how it adds value to your business. So really excited about this webinar today. And thanks to um, Eddie and, and Joe for putting a lot of effort into this. Um, so yeah, very exciting. And how was your uh, morning chest so far? A bit stressful, I hope. <laughs> We should put this on camera, but <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. All sorted, all sorted. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's always you know when you've got key people in the business that are sick, it's always mm. never going to be easy to, yeah. um, you know, handle. Hi, Kylie. Welcome, welcome. Morning, Kylie. Welcome to the webinars. Thanks for taking the time. So we're about five minutes away from getting started. Got a lot of people that registered, um, more than 100 people. So we're uh, hoping to get at least 50 actually turning up. Typically, we get about 50% conversion from registering to actually attending. People just get busy, forget, etc. cetera. Um, but yeah, so we're hoping to get 50 people. Let's see how we go. Got a few more minutes to go. Um, but yeah, as I was saying before, it's very exciting we're, um, to be talking about the org chart. Um, incidentally, Kai from uh, InfraCore, you, you already using the uh, org chart? No, no, we're in the process of working with Kylie, I think, yeah. yeah, about the org chart. So it's very good. I'm glad you've turned up, Kylie and Megan. Hi, Annalise. Welcome to the webinar. Thanks for taking the time. So I'll save a few more minutes to go and we'll get started. We're really excited about this because um, with all the innovations that we put into the org chart, now, you know, Jesse can offer our clients the ability to have a free trial. But the interesting thing about that um, it would be it would be with your own data because the import tool now is pretty sophisticated. We were able to offer a um, uh, an import as part of the free trial. So when you're trialing the org chart, you're really trialing it with your own data, your own people, which includes yourself. <laughs> it should be in the org chart. Um, so it's really exciting. But also, you know, in the last few months, we've added a lot of features as well to it such as be able to surface on the cards to be able to surface any kind of information, customize the information you want to show on those nodes in the org chart. And also there's a feature where you only show, let's say two, three pieces of information that you believe maybe it's okay for all managers or all the people that log on to be able to see it. But then, um, there's a more feature when you click on the more it goes into more in-depth information that probably you want to hide from certain people so uh, you can control who can see more and more sort of private uh, in a sense information such as maybe pay data that comes to mind you can hide that but it's accessible at the at your fingertips still from the org chart so a lot, a lot of features have been added uh, also the export uh, that wasn't there a few months ago been added in the last few months, I think late December, yeah. to be able to export what you see on the screen to a PDF or what's, what's open, all the nodes that are open to a PDF for the purpose of a presentation or stuff like that, but also to share it live. Instead of sending PDF, you can just send the link to the whole org chart or to maybe just a branch in the org chart, you know, a department, division, etc. And so 
the person that gets that link, they will not be able to do anything other than just seeing that basic information, name of the employee, their position, including who they report to. And that is it. So um, it's secure, but it's more live and less work and sending emails back and forth and becoming out of date, that PDF having to export it again. So the, the, you've got two options when you're sharing. Uh, got a couple <clears> more minutes. Yeah, yeah, two more minutes to get started. Yeah, that's right. So I'm joined with Jess. I'm sure all of you know Jess, our senior account manager, and uh, two people from marketing sitting off camera on the right, doing the changing the the, the camera views between uh, me and Jess, and making sure everything goes well. So thanks, guys, for all your effort in the last few days. Appreciate it. Um, got 20 people now, very encouraging. I think we should be able to get to 50 in the next five minutes. So this looks good. A uh, couple of minutes and we'll get started. I think um, Joe has got uh, a icebreaker poll thing for us. So we'll pop this up in a minute once uh, uh, we've gone into the 11 yep. o'clock. All right, so it looks like it's been popped up. Um, oh, already? So you, oh, okay, sorry. If you guys <laughs> just want to join with, the, if you could time travel, which period would you go to? It's, it's an icebreaker. <laughs> How about you, Jess? Oh, let's see. I would go, hmm, I would say the past. <laughs> yeah? What is it that you want to rectify no, major just, stuff up? <laughs> I've, always, like, I've always liked the 50s. Like that oh, is so that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All the yeah. groove, maybe, of the yeah. 80s and stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very good, very good. So um, if you can complete it, guys, um, when you've got a moment, that would be appreciated. Um, so it's an icebreaker, what we call, um, to get us in the mood for the webinar, which is the org chart and the position library, which is something that we are very, very excited about because it's an integral part, it's the backbone, the org chart is becoming, and the position library, they're becoming more and more of the backbone of the entire platform or our HRIS. Um, because not only it's presenting all that data uh, for, for a lot of uh, convenient reasons, but also you're um, able to uh, use it as the center for initiating all the processes such as recruiting, um, change of existing employee conditions, you know, moving someone from part-time to full-time, casual to part-time, etc. cetera, um, as well as offboarding. And that's why we say it's going to stay alive all the time because you're starting always from the org chart and you never have to, after the fact, update the org chart. So it's really, really powerful tool. Um, and whenever someone, the board says, I've got a presentation, I need an org chart, you go, okay. You click on the, at the top, send in the link, um, share it with them, it takes two seconds and they can do whatever they want to do with it in terms of what nodes they want to show or hide. They can collapse and open things, change the shoulder nodes to be vertical versus horizontal. They can do whatever they want without you worrying about any privacy, any stuff, because that sharing view will not allow them to do anything other than seeing the name of the employee and their position and who they report to. Okay, so it's a very powerful tool to be to be handy uh, for whenever you need that uh, org chart. But also clearly part of our plan is when you're advertising to be able to, if you really want to provide a job description that includes, you know, the, uh, the reporting line for that position, you're able to automatically, we could make that happen for you. We want to automate that process going forward. Um, I think we can very good. So I think we can uh, now get started, guys. Thank you very much for taking the time. I know everybody's very busy. We really appreciate you. Um, everybody knows this is about the org chart. So we're going to jump to the agenda. If we can go to the next slide, guys. Thank you, Joe. Um, Jesse, our senior account manager. Everybody knows Jesse and myself. I'm Mike Khalil, the CEO. And the next slide is the agenda. Uh, do I need to, can everybody see the screen properly or should I maximize my screen oh, like that? Or, I think we can does all that see be better? It. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Very good. So the first thing that is really, really exciting here is importing your data. So the import tool, we've been refining it for the last 12 months. It's been a really major piece of innovation. Um, it's a quite complex when you start to talk about reporting line, 
how do you in a spreadsheet indicate her uh, reports to her in a, a clear way and make sure it gets imported without any confusion. Um, and we're very pleased to say we're in a very, very good place now. And that's why this is really good news for particularly for you guys, our clients, is if you want to trial it, you're able to trial it with your own data now. So it's a pretty significant trial because part of the trial, we will help you to set up that trial and will help you to import your own data. Even if it's not all your entire data, maybe a department, you know, 20, 30, 50, 100, 500 notes, whatever you choose, as long as you've got that data, um, we can now import it for you as part of the trial. So it's a really significant uh, piece of innovation that we released very recently. And then as you can see there, we're going to talk about general admins, add notes, remove notes, etc. when you still build in it and stuff. But clearly, the idea is once it's there, uh, you know, only the owner of the account or the admin guys can do things like that, add and remove, because everything else should come from the proper processes. You want to move someone from here to there, it's a, it's a, it's a cross-boarding process. So we keep track of the whole thing and there's an approval process and maybe a pack to be sent and all that. So that's a proper, what we call life cycle, employee life cycle process. Same thing with change of conditions. This person is staying where they are, still reporting to the same person and the same team, same department, all that is good. We just want to uh, move them from maybe casual to part-time under the same position title. Then that's a change of condition. Also, you do it through the, it's a process so where there's an approval form, however small or big that might be. And there could be a pack where a new contract needs to be drawn and all that, all part of that workflow. Um, so I just want to, you know, make sure that's the case and and you can see we are going to go through all these processes so um uh the third point from the bottom recruit and onboard straight from the org chart execute change of conditions from the org chart change of conditions it covers the cross-boarding as well they're very very similar it's very tiny change and then you, the offboarding so that's why if you're doing everything from the org chart the org chart will always, always still live. You never, after the fact, have to update the org chart. And we will see that in real life. So uh, that's the agenda for today, and we're going to get started with the importing. Okay, so for that purpose, I've already got a Sandbox account, just a free plan account that I've just created from the website 10 minutes ago. It's right here. And I've got, we built an Excel spreadsheet. You'll have to share your screen. Oh, I'm not sharing. Sorry, guys. One moment. Uh, there. Okay, so this is a brand new account. I don't uh, think it's shared quite yet. Not sharing? Oh, here we go. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Cool. Um, this is a brand new account that I've just created 10 minutes ago from the website. Nothing special about this. This could be your existing account, or if you want to do the trial from a sandbox from a brand new account like this, also we can facilitate that. If you don't want to, um, you know, when you're importing data and stuff like that, complicate what you've got right now. Uh, we'll create a free plan account for you, brand new account, and for the purpose of the trial and import the data into it in the same way that I'm about to do it right now in a live manner. So that's the brand new account. I've come here to the org chart. I've got nothing here. It's empty. I'll go there and I click on import. Um, import again. Don't ask me why we need to click the button twice, two buttons, but nevertheless. Uh, there's a three options um, that are really interesting. We're going to go with this option. The difference is very tiny. The reports to, how do you indicate who uh, that person, say you've got an entry in the spreadsheet, who that person, you want to indicate who that person report to. You can indicate it in two ways. That's the only difference between those two. You can report it, uh, you can indicate it via uh, just the position, providing the position uh, name is unique, um, that will work. So for example, in a school, the uh, head of the physics department, if such a thing exists, that's quite unique. You're not going to have two heads of physics department in the organization, as opposed to just GM, you might have 10 GMs maybe. Yeah. Um, so that will work then. That's fine. That's all we need. So um, online career reports to head of the physics department. That's fine and that's a valid entry, that's great. You provide the data that way. Um, the difference here the, between the two, but this one here, the blue one in the middle, um, is you, you, those position names 
that they're not unique and therefore you've got to qualify it with the name of the person. As I mentioned before, if it's just a GM, then you've got to say, which a GM? So a GM and it's actually James um, Murphy. Uh, that's really the only difference. And we will have a look at the spreadsheet in a moment anyway. So let's get going. We're going to work with this one. We prepared, a, uh, I think, 12 entries based on our organization. So it's an Excel format. We're going to select the file. By the way, this is available for you right now, guys. If you want to have a look, we've got an example. You can, you can come to the pretend you want to do the import and then click on download here and it gives you a sample. When I say sample, it doesn't have real data, but it's got the columns at least. So nevertheless, we're going to open this file here that we created, as I said. Um, it already gave us feedback that it's got 12 nodes. So we've the platform plat processed the file already. And it said uh, it's got 12 nodes in it, meaning 12 entries. And out of those 12 entries, 10 unique positions. So two positions, clearly, they are managers that were repeated twice or three times. And that's why uh, we've got only 10 unique positions. Okay, so we're going to say, okay, start the import, import started. So if you close this then and come back here, this changes to, look, currently there's an import in process. Um, so all I've got to do is just wait for a minute and refresh. Here we go. If you're importing, say, a thousand, which is we just finished an import for uh, one of our great clients, about just over a thousand nodes, um, it probably took about six minutes in total to import those uh, thousand nodes and we keep you in touch and we send you an email when it's done and all that, so it's no problem. But nevertheless, we will always help you with the import guys. It's not like you're doing it complete on your own at all. Okay, so in this case here, as you can see, um, we've got um, how our head of product development, he's got two developers, senior developers reporting to him, and we've got one person reporting to Tristan. Um, that's how it works. Uh, it's very, very snappy when you open it. So even if there was 100 people reporting to men, it's still going to be that same speed. It's really, really scalable. You can have literally a million uh, nodes in this org chart and, and it would never slow it down. Very, very scalable. Um, so this is how it works for some of you who haven't seen it. Um, you can, uh, from the point of view of arranging things, especially if you want to print or something or export to PDF or take screenshot, you're able to change, say, I've got a bunch of nodes here to say these guys here. I want to make it vertical. Uh, I think you can go here, click on the the, um, the head of the branch, in this case, uh, the CEO, and you go here and you click on that. It makes the children under this node go vertical. So this is just the styling stuff. We're not talking anything serious here. Uh, but, you know, they, they're important, these features. Um, I've brought back to become horizontal, which is the default. Um, the, 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 so that's the import, uh, on the agenda. I think the next item, Joe, do you mind putting up the agenda for us on the, at least remind me what the next thing was. We wanted to do a bunch of admin things, add, remove nodes and yeah, I think I've got it. I think I've got it. All good. There we go. Just yeah. put it up. So one, uh, a couple of powerful things in, when it comes to the org chart, before we start to talk about initiating the processes to recruit and to make a change of conditions and offboarding from it. Um, um, probably my favorite would be the fact that you can customize what appears on these uh, nodes. Some people call them the cards, they look like a card. So at the moment, by default, as you can see, it's the name of the employee and their position. We just need you to share sure. it again. We just oh, have the, uh, the agenda. The oh, sorry, I did ask for that. Okay, I'll share again. Cool. Um, so I was saying one of the powerful features in my opinion here and it is to be able to customize what appears on the on the node here, on this the card. Some people call this the card, I call it the node. Um, the uh, by default we show you the name of the employee and their title. By the way, pictures are available. You can um, go into the employee record from the employee database that everybody has access to, even if you just have recruitment or from here directly as a shortcut, you can go to the employee record and I can edit the employee and uh, provide the picture. Where is the picture, guys? Uh, what am I doing? Sorry, you click on the on this disc here 
and that is all about the picture. So you upload the picture there and that will appear everywhere in the employee database and the employee search as well as in here. So you do it just from one place and it comes up everywhere every time you're looking at the employee. Okay, so that's the default the picture of the employee if it's there, the employee name and their uh, position name. Just don't forget guys what we mean by position in our platform anyway. And I know you're the HR experts, I'm not, you know, telling you what's wrong, what's right and what's wrong. I'm just indicating what we mean by that. For us, the position library, which is right there, I'm just going to zoom a little bit in the menu. The, these are the unique positions. So if you have, for example, I think um, the, the when I start to work on these uh, recruitment and onboarding and change of conditions, I'm going to be using a hospitality industry example. So for example, a waiter, you might have five or 100 waiters in this in the organization um, but you don't want to have to draw you know the position description is going to be one and and the way we see it it's just one unique position but multiple people tag with that position or you know work under that position because you know the position descriptions in terms of requirements and qualifications and and all that stuff is is unique one it's one thing and that is the idea that it's all about the source of truth for our for us so you only have one waiter and you can have as many people in the organization that are waiters just by simply tagging them. Um, as, as, I can, as, as I said, this is all part of that search for making sure all the time we're adhering to source of truth. The information is only stored once, it's only maintained once. Okay, so in saying that, the feature I was referring to is you can go here and click on, I'm just going to zoom a little bit so you can see it, info surfacing. I'm going to go back from the zooming point of view and you click on that and you're able to drag and drop literally what you want to surface i don't know if i've got any data in here that's going to be useful to to show you how to 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 show you the information but i can certainly show you how the thing works um, as you can see we only have three that will appear on the card the rest will go under uh, the a very interesting feature sorry i'm doing right click instead of what's going on Ah, there's multiple options there. I'm sorry, that was my fault. Okay, we're not going to go into too much into depth with that, but I'm just going to show you. I don't have any data, so nothing's going to change from even doing that. Uh, that is how you can customize the data here. Then what happens is you only can show three extra pieces of information other than the employee name. And after that, there'll be a more in here. So that will allow you to have control over who can see the more part of the roles so for example when people come to the org chart that's part of the access control you can have information that doesn't have too much privacy here and only the people that you want to they click on the more and they can see things like the pay data for example so it's really effective way very effective way for you to um, organize uh, the data that you want to see very quickly here and making sure the rest is just out of your fingertip by clicking on this and you decide who will have the ability to actually go to the information. Um, we just had a quick question um, just from Agnes. Uh, where does the data for the surfacing come from? For, well, for the? Uh, just where for the surfacing, mm -hmm. um, where does the data actually come from? Beautiful. And will this read from the import template? Uh, sure, the import that we just did, yeah? yeah. With the import, very good point. So you're importing employees and their positions, and you're importing, also we allow you to import information about them. So custom information, including the pay. So they are full-time, part-time, what's the salary, what's the hourly rate, what's the casual rate, whatever that might be. You can import all that data. So speaking of source of truth, what we do then when we bring in the employees, they go in two places. Clearly, the employees go into the employee database. Think about it. This is one source of truth. Employee table, let's call it, yeah? Then the positions, the unique positions, that is, they go into the position library. So in the org chart, all we're doing is just linking, linking the, those employees from the employee table, linking the positions from the position table. And that is why we're, we're saying this source. I hope this answers uh, your point, but also, uh, as you will see in a moment, uh, as you as you're using a platform, you're recruiting, you're doing change of conditions, etc. All that stays live. So we not sure if you're aware, and you will see it now coming up. We've been working very, very heavily on the remuneration object. 
So all that now is all baked in organically there. And you, I think it will come together a bit more, but I'm more than happy to answer more questions, guys, if that wasn't clear. Yeah, just another one on that. Um, Janelle says that their source of truth is from their payroll system. Mm -hmm. uh, are we able to import from that as well? Yes, 100%. With payroll systems, that is where we we will never say no to anything to do with each other. That is what we want to be able to do go forward is to say to an HR team, look, between the Martian platform and between your payroll system, that's all you need to do the HRS, pretty much the full fledged HRS and a payroll. Um, they'll always be on the fringes bunch of tools. I'm not telling you what else you want to use. There'll be probably hundreds of small little things, but as a core HRS, that will be it. Hopefully that's all you will need. Um, so the answer is, is yes, at so many levels, because even for example, right now we are literally saying to our clients we've got so many clients that have got integration with their payroll but it's really in the sense one way mm -hmm. when you when you onboard people you push them to the payroll and that's great you, when you're only using us for recruitment onboarding that's all you need it's not it's not like a criticism to our platform or to the clients but what i'm saying now that we've got the change of condition and the offboarding going we want to also sync that and i know a lot of the integration partners that we have uh, like Orion, for example, I know a lot of clients use Orion, a lot of our clients, Orion is called, is it? Orion, yeah. 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 Um, they, we are literally started to speak with them about, we're finalizing now the whole syncing. So even when you do change of conditions to put the, push those changes over, when you do an offboarding to say, oh, this person now is leaving, that's the effective date, anything else that might need to go across yeah. to keep the, the, the two things in sync. And uh, just on that as well, Janelle said, um, if we make changes in the payroll system, can it automatically update overnight rather than an import? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. This is the second part of the question. Very, very, you're absolutely right to ask that question. That was what I was going to say next. You're right. Um, so that's the one thing that we discussed about the pushing from our end to the payroll, um, not just onboarding, but also changing condition offboarding. But what Janelle is saying rightly, um, it needs to come in that direction as well. For example, if you feel that your positions, you want to maintain a source of truth there, then we want to sync them on an overnight basis, every two hours, whatever the technology allows us to do. Um, there's definitely, we're happy to to do that as well. So in syncing in both directions, in other words. Yeah. That it's 100% uh, we have appetite for that. That is, as I said, our vision is to work with a payroll system in complete harmony. And then um, she also asked, does the org chart also show vacant positions if we import all the positions? Of course, the, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So that is going to be the next demo that we're going to do, uh, the, the next part of the, the demo that we're going to do. So for example, if I'm here and I go and I change it, try um, open, uh, oh, I don't have any positions in this account, don't worry about it. We'll switch to the other account where I'm going to start to work on the positions and the pay data and stuff, and you'll see what I mean. You can have the vacant positions, as many of them, and, and uh, yeah, no worries. Uh, any other questions? There's a lot of things I wanted to explain, but I don't want to... I think we're uh, good to go. Yeah. Yeah? Good to go, yeah. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of features there, guys. You'll be surprised. It's pretty uh, mature and rich product already so far. Um, okay, so I'm going to jump to another account that has got positions and pay data and stuff to be able to do some recruitment from the org chart and some change of condition from the org chart. It should be right there. Yeah, perfect. So I'll just minimize this then. Alrighty, uh, so this org chart um, was built before and, uh, ah, okay. I need a moment to jump into the right account, guys. I think I'm confusing myself here, which account. I'm just gonna stop sharing for privacy and then uh, give me 10 seconds. Once I'm on the right account, then I can share again. And uh, just for the questions, just on the other side, uh, we will have this recorded and anybody that wants um, to have a, that shared, just let us know. I know what happened. Just one moment. Um, I guess we'll, we're just waiting for Anwar. We'll just do another poll. 
Uh, what admin tasks slow you down the most? How did we go with the poll? Yeah, is that good? it's actually very good. So, um, What's, what can we learn from one that? One of the biggest ones is manually keeping up the org chart mm. up to date, mm. Mm. Uh, maintaining the position library. Yeah. That's uh, right after that one. Yep. Maintaining, yep. So all four of them are very. Yeah. But those top three. Yeah. Yeah. That's brilliant, guys. So if we just focus on those two, uh, that is exactly f really interesting. That's exactly what I'm about to do now. The part of the demo that I'm about to do, we're showing you how we're going to recruit do change of conditions and offboarding from the org chart and how it updates itself therefore and, and you never have to do anything when it comes to updating. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Same with the position library from the point of view of the source of truth. Um, that's why we're saying, you know, your position library are the unique positions. So when you want to change the position description, you're only doing it in one place. That, for example, in the case of the wait on. So you're one wait up position, but multiple people in your organization, in various different teams, even different countries, etc., could be under the, uh, that are all um, adhering to that same position. Um, so with the position here, one of the things that we did, although we have ambitions to allow ambitions to allow you to edit and create within the platform your position description, but you can certainly upload a file in here. Um, and when you upload the file, you'll be able to share it both with the managers or the execs when they are approving the requisition, but also with the candidates when they are applying through the application form. But we don't want to waste too much on that time on that. I want to stay, I guess, on the org chart just so you don't, you guys don't feel that I'm diverting. Um, the first thing we want to do is uh, go to the so-called agreements. A lot of you have seen this, but some of you haven't. Agreements is, we chose that word carefully because it could be called enterprise agreement, it could be called different things in different countries and different states, etc. Um, so really that could be an award system, an enterprise agreement, or it could be your own banding system, just your own company's band, bands that you're creating, nothing to do with any anything formal out there. Um, so it's very, very generic. In this case, in this account, I've got these examples here. I've got, it's an, I'm assuming the uh, account I'm in, this fictitious organization is a hospitality industry organization, and it's got uh, properties in multiple states, New South Wales, WA, and Victoria. So this really takes this example of source of truth to another level, and I'll explain what I mean. If I open the New South Wales, I've got waiter here, the waiter information uh, it's got at the moment in my quick example is three levels. That's the standard hourly rate, the standard casual rate, standard uh, uh, um, salary. What we're going to do, we're going to delete this and we're going to do it together. Uh, so you know where that information came from. So we're going to go back here and we're going to add a new job family and we're going to call it waiter. This is very very internal information, call it whatever like weight of job family, because maybe there's a slightly slight different variations uh, for your exact positions within the business. Maybe you've got a junior waiter and a senior waiter, and but they all you want that pay data to come from the same place. So really, you know, uh, you can call this whatever you like. Just how you structure the data. Um, 38 hours per week, you can indicate that by fortnight as opposed to per, per week, so you can put in here uh, 60, 70 per week, uh, per fortnight, sorry. Uh, rate versus salary, do I want to, the data I'm entering, is it going to be only rates because maybe all I, I, I only hire these uh, people in this position uh, as casuals maybe, so I don't need to enter the salary, entirely up to you. I'm going to keep the default, I'm going to enter both the rates and the salary. Is it pay points versus band? Bands is where you're entering min and max. So min and max for the hourly rate, min and max for the casual, min and max for the uh, salary. Uh, pay points is just uh, uh, one of those. 
And so if I do PayPoint, call it whatever you want to call it, I'm just going to keep it simple, level one, hourly rate $22, casual 24, standard salary 50,000. Add another one, level two, 25, 20, 30, let's say, and 55,000. And the, finally, the last one, level, oh, we need an L in there. Level three is, guys, can you see properly? Should I zoom a little bit more? Yeah, or? just that's perfect. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Okay. And uh, we're starting with 28, and this is 33, and 60,000. Okay. Um, so what's interesting here, if this organization is a national organization where they've got uh, different enterprise agreements or award systems in different states, um, I would then do the same thing here. But what's clever, and I'm not going to do that part of the demo, it's going to complicate it a little bit. We did something really, really interesting. The, the, we allow you to put proper geolocation, so proper a New South Wales geolocation, like a map location, into the actual award. You can see this is flagged as New South Wales. And so what that means, your locations, we, we built a very intelligent location system. I'll show you exactly what I mean. If I go to the account settings, I don't want to get stuck on that point too much. We're going to do something simpler for the demo, but just so you keep it in mind. The locations here, this is what we call the new pillars. They're not just a dummy drop down with names. So you've got here the name, this could be in, in the industry that I'm in, hospitality could be the name of the restaurants or the venues. Could be, you know, I've got an interesting example. Um, what is it? Uh, Golden Grill, whatever, Sicily Steak, etc. But the location is a proper geolocation, literally from the map, let alone the whole thing. And so you can see now we'll be able to match all that. If the award is tagged with New South Wales, and you've got a bunch of properties around Sydney and, and, and in Cumption, New South Wales or whatever. Um, that means on the fly, when you when a manager is recruiting, they choose the the, um, the the position, they choose the location, and we already recommend and suggest, we know, oh, that's the award uh, the that you're going to go with. We can match it automatically. So let's not get stuck with that, though, guys. We're going to keep things very simple. Uh, we've created the new... A waiter a job family here and we're going now to move to the next part so we've um we've got an award or, or an agreement for the waiter we're going to go into the positions now the waiter is there i'm going to remove it and start from scratch together now we're going to create a unique position called waiter it can be called whatever you like as i said you might have a junior waiter and senior waiter so two positions two unique positions um, nevertheless this waiter is we're going to go into the details of the position, and that's where um, we talked about the job description being here, by the way. You can attach it. Uh, we go into the engagement. You might be thinking, what the hell is engagement? It's very interesting. It's very controversial, but hopefully you'll have some empathy for us about why we call it that. Okay. A lot of our clients, they also engage volunteers. They also engage external contractors from labor hire companies or directly with their ABNs, etc. So the, the engagement, I just find myself having to use the word engagement because it's not always employment. The engagement with, with this recruitment that you're doing could be for the purpose of volunteers or employees or contractors or even students because they're doing some research in your organization. And there'll be even five more types we will add later. At the moment, these are the types available employment based engagement volunteering based engagement so it's maybe a bit too small uh external contractor or student um clearly in this case we're going to just choose it's an employment oh what's going on here sorry ah oh, the zooming thing i'm just stuck Okay, I'll just refresh the browser. Not sure. Never seen this happening before. Mm. Maybe that zoom in and out. Is it done? Yeah. I'll go back into it, open engagement, and I choose the employee. 
I'll zoom a little bit, guys, for you. Oh, zoom on to stuff. Going on. <laughs> so when you're um, the first question we ask when you're trying to um, uh, design the remuneration for um, for that position, in this case, the waiter, is it common law? Sorry. Is it common law or is it based on a predefined agreement? In this case, we're going to choose the predefined agreement. Uh, if it's common law, we're just pretty much going to ask you, is it full time, part time? What's the min and max? That kind of thing. Very straightforward. The predefined agreement is the more complicated one. We're going to go into that. Um, this is the multi agreements. You turn it on just while we're here. Be, if you're using, if you're a national business and this position is going to be drawing from multiple agreements depending on where the location of the, the position is. We're not going to use it at the moment. Um, we're just going to choose the agreement that we just uh, worked on, the New South Wales one. We're going to choose the waiter job family, if you remember, that we created. And we can say, look, with this one, we don't know. We could be creative. We we're happy to bring on people in this position from all the levels. We'll see based on who we find and what the manager wants at the time when they are recruiting. So as HR, who is designing this position, you're providing guidance. Uh, you don't even have to do any of that. It can be done all on the fly by the manager who's submitting the form. This is none of that is mandatory. This is to provide guidance. It's nice. You'll see what happens if you do that for your for your unique positions, or at least the most frequently used positions where, you know, I know for a fact, most of our clients, 80% of all the recruitment they do is is focused around 10, 15 positions. So you can design those positions in half an hour, an hour, one day, get all that sorted with all the pay data, and you never have to worry about it again. Yeah, that's most of the bulk of your recruitment. So now that we linked it to where the pay data is going to be coming from, now you're also suggesting, again, none of that is mandatory. It's just going to make life easy for the manager when they're recruiting. You can then say, look, in our business, we only hire a full-time or casual for, for a waiter. So we go, okay, fine. Uh, full-time, as you can see, it picked up all the data you've already entered. We don't need you to do anything here. Uh, also indicating we'll also do casuals. And with the casual, we ask a question here. It's hardly used. I mean, it's no big deal. It's, it's like the budget. What sort of you intend to spend in total year for that person? So look, it's $50,000 a year. That helps with this new feature we're working on for budgeting of vacancies and non-vacancies and be able to say, look, what's going on with my budget from the employee's point of view. So we've indicated we hire permanent full-time and casual, but all the pay data is going to be drawn from this uh, um, award that we created information. So we can uh, collapse this. It's all now saved. It's live. So what does that mean now? When we go back to the org chart, um, we are going to go into the restaurant manager here and we're going to go to Stacy, who's the front of the house, who the waiter is going to be reporting to. But instead of using those, let's not worry about them. Uh, we're going to show you how to create a brand new vacancy here. Uh, I'm going to add a new node. I'm going to even create three, for example, waitresses position. All I've got to do is just select. Again, that's the single source of truth, a drawing on that unique position, the waiter. But we're creating three vacancies, as you can see. These are the nodes got created. They're all tagged with the same waiter. So when you make changes to the position descriptions, to the requirements, to the pay data, you do it in one place under the position library. That's the whole source of truth. So when I'm recruiting, I can recruit for multiple or for just one. If I wanted to recruit for multiple, I go to the team leader here, start the recruitment from there, recruit um, for nodes under this node. And that's how you can indicate um, how many people you want to hire. Let's keep it simple. I'm going to go to one of those. I'm going to say recruit into this node. I've only got one requisition form. It got selected automatically. Continue. That is from this point onwards, it's, it's exactly what you've been using. Every one of you, I'm sure, uses a request to hire workflow. This is exactly the same. And that is the beautiful thing that we did. It's really baked. All that stuff that we did is, is baked within the core of the platform. So you're able to take advantage of it, even if you're not using the org chart, which we would like you to for sure. But uh, you're still going to take advantage of the position library and the agreements innovations that we did. And that's what you're seeing right here. So whether you've started from here, in other words, I'll just get out of here. We can come back. You can see the node now, the vacant. Oops. 
stronger zoom for you, sorry. You can see even that vacant node that we just created, because we started the process, it indicates, see, there's a recruitment process happening, it's in draft approval, it's a requisition. So what I was going to do, the reason we came back here, I was going to say, even if you go, you're not using the org chart yet, this is the, the normal job list, I can go to new job, I can go to, um, I want to start with the requisition, choose the form, and the same thing. This whole position, the engagement, etc. everything I'm showing you, it's available for you when it comes to the pay data, you know, the agreements and the position library. It's available for you even if you're not using the org chart. And I really encourage you to take full advantage of it. Most of you is already paying for it. It's not even, you need, don't even need to worry about the money. So what I'm going to do though, we're going to go back to the org chart and continue from there because we want to show you how this person will appear automatically in the org chart. No need to update the org chart afterwards, remember? So this is where we're working. I'm going to go back here and open the approval again and continue from that point onwards. So the location, I'm going to choose um, North Sydney. And the engagement is going to be an employee. Um, and I'm going to use the full time. It chose the manager. It's already been set up by the HR. Um, so when you when the manager chooses that, it's all there. HR already indicated for a waiter, we're happy to start them at either of these levels, as opposed to one level or certain subset of levels. It's all there, all linked. They go cool. That's it. And now we summarize all the data there for them. 38, hour, um, 38 hours per week. Um, the uh, full-time equivalent is clearly one because it's full-time. Um, pay value options, predefined agreement, and these are the levels, and this is the job family called the waiter job family. So now all I've got to do is the date, the uh, ideal start date. I'm going to choose, say, next Monday or the Monday after that, and uh, pretty much done. Some of our clients, great clients, that is, who are on this call, to capture this data so far, all I had to do is just two clicks. You, you, you would have had to um, customize more than 20, 30, 40 different custom fields to capture all that data and make it work and still will never work anywhere near what you're looking at here in terms of single source of truth and the ease of maintenance of your pay data. As you can see when you went to the agreements page, how easy and for, for people to go in and find, yep, this is the agreement, this is the job family where I want to do the updates, click on it, change the casual rate, save, done. So now that we're here, guys, we're going to submit this very quickly. It's pretty much ready to go. I've made it fairly simple so we don't get stuck on the requisition. This is not the purpose of the, um, of the webinar. So now uh, the org chart, oh, why I'm using the Zoom on the pad? I should be using this Zoom, the proper Zoom that's available in the org chart. So now the status is recruitment still uh, pending approval. So that we keep that status up to date all the time until someone appears in here. We have hired, um, you know, James Murphy. James Murphy is there and you will see that in a minute. So that's where we're at. If I go now to the normal jobs page you're all familiar with, as you can see, these are the two positions there. Um, this is the one that we're working with. That's the one that I did as an example, um, how you start it from the jobs page. So this is our thing here. Because I'm the um, approver as well as I'm playing the roles of the hiring manager, the approver and the HR all from one user. So I can log in and do it from here, uh, approve it. I don't have to go to my email. And because I'm the HR who's supposed to uh, complete the process and start posting, I can also do that too. Oh, it's complaining about something. Oh, sorry. The account is set up with multiple recruitment workflows. I need to choose one. Okay. Um, in our platform, I'm not sure if you guys know, the recruitment workflow that has got all the different stages, you know, shortlisting, share with managers, interview, etc. You can have multiple processes, for example, for different job families, different part of the business, you might want to use different process, you're able to have multiples. And if that's the case, 
we don't let you start the job unless you tell us which recruitment workflow the candidates will be following. So, which makes perfect sense. That's all it was. Okay, so now we're here. We're not going to worry about the advertising waste your time, guys. I'm sure every one of you is uh, very, very competent with that. We're going to jump, not even the posting, we're going to jump straight to the candidates. And instead of uh, pretending applications came through, we're going to link existing people from the database. So we can go straight to what we want to demonstrate for the purpose of the demo. Um, we'll create something on the manually, or we can, uh, yeah, okay, let's do that. Enter manually, we're going to call it um, Anwa application. So that's uh, pretending um, it's an application that just came through. Uh, Khalil or, you know, webinar. Cool. I'll put my email address in here. So this is a candidate that you either linked from your talent pools, database, etc., or they applied either way. Um, so we want to tick the candidate and link them to this job. Perfect. So now we have a candidate against that job. We're going to go into this candidate. We're not going to waste your time about any of these uh, steps. We're going to go straight to the final offer because that's part of the backbone of recruiting, finalize offer, start to onboarding, and then uh, the onboarding pack is complete, the person pops up in the org chart. That's what we really try and show you. So as, as you can see, the uh, person finalizing the offer, in this case, in this form, all they have to finalize is the pay data. Uh, the pay data will show you everything that you that's already there. All you've got to do is decide on the level. We show you for the level even what the data is. Um, so you go, yes, this person, I've agreed with them, we're going to start them on level two. That's what we negotiated over the phone. And um, I'm sorry, didn't get selected. Uh, level two, so we pre-populate everything for you, the final salary, because we said it's a permanent full-time, we picked up the salary. If it was a casual, we would have picked up the casual rate, which would have been $30 uh, per hour. That would have gone in here. So that's perfect. That's all we have to do. Just choose which level, finalize which level. And this is a summary of everything there. Uh, that's your final rate, uh, that's your final salary, in this case, 55,000. It's a it's a full-time, full-time equivalent is one because it's a full-time job, permanent full-time, it's all there. So that's all you have to do. I'm going to submit it without approval. As you know, this is all customizable. This could be you require an approval and the approval will be sent to one or more people whereby not only, I don't want to demonstrate that, but I'm just going to clearly explain it not only will show them the final offer, but will also show them details about the actual candidate and this person, what's the name? Anwar Application Webinar, very interesting name. It will say, look, can you please approve for me the hiring of Anwar Application Webinar against this job? And by the way, here's the initial request to hire that was approved, and here's the final offer, and here's any changes between them. All of that is in one thing. So it's like one page with three tabs the requisition, the offer, and the person. So that's really, really powerful, by the way, guys, if if a lot of you probably paying for it and you didn't know it's there. Uh, submit without approval in this case, so we can keep moving, guys. Um, um, what are we doing? What do we want to do next? Okay, we want to now, uh, yeah, we want to now move this person, now the offer is finalized, to the onboarding. We want to start the onboarding. We want to pick any pack. Um, it's a new starter pack and send them the pack. We're not going to zoom on the onboarding, guys. I wish we can. We don't have the time. So the pack has been sent. Um, if I go, for example, to the... Oh, no, sorry, I haven't sent the pack. It's just been created. So if I go to recent, we'll pick, we can pick it up from there. This is the pack. I'll open it again, and we're just going to send it to the employee. Uh, invite, just to make sure that's the right email. It's perfect. Okay, so send the pack. Um, pack sent. Perfect. So we're not going to go into the pack and go and complete all the items. It takes time. Again, we want to keep moving because it's about the org chart. So I'm going to do use this feature that says manually complete it. So we're going to complete the pack manually. 
Um, and now hopefully if I go to the all chart, we will see that this person now is there already. So reporting to the front end, here you go. So the status is, oh, again, I keep, I'm using to do, use, used to use the zooming on the, the, uh, the pad of the laptop as opposed to when I'm in the all chart, I should be using this and all that. Nevertheless, this is the person here, the waiter is the position, um, and we decided to surface here the location because we've assigned a location. They are in this property in North Sydney. It's a restaurant, let's call it. Um, and the, uh, yeah, the status is recruitment pack sent. Um, ah, pack sent as opposed to pack approved. Yeah, because you did approve. Just yeah. yeah, very interesting. Nevertheless, this will disappear whether it's sent or approved once the, the, um, the start date is upon us. So the reason it's still there it's because the start date is in a couple of weeks time. As soon as it hits the start date, then all of that is becomes, you have to go into the history to find that information no longer needed because that person now is there in the organization. So you really don't have to do anything. Uh, can we take some questions about hopefully, I feel I've demonstrated um, how when you're recruiting from the org chart, you never have to update the org chart. Can we take, uh, questions about anything that we've just done. Sure. Uh, so Ariella, um, she says, can uh, HR change the level if we need, if the manager has chosen it incorrectly by mistake? The level, um, at which point? Uh, yeah, of course, of course, of course, absolutely. I, I think I got it. So let me explain it, guys. If I'm the, in the admin here, I am good. Um, I can go to my job approval workflows okay so this is the requisition form that we use guys in this just just a minute ago um what you can do you can add in here clearly oh we can't edit it because it's live i'm going to duplicate it super quickly bear with me it takes 10 seconds so we can show you that feature it's very very good question and a very powerful feature too Okay, so this is in draft, we can now edit it, do whatever we want to do to this. So I'm going to add, let's say here, uh, hey, whoop, HR formal correction, I'm going to call it. Oh my God, sorry. You don't have to say formal correction, I'm just putting the point in terms of relevancy to the question. So this could be, I'm just going to do something here, CFO, just uh, for people who maybe haven't seen this, you can have as many approval points that you want. So HR can be injected anywhere here. So for example, what you might want to do is inject the HR uh, straight after the manager submitted it before it even goes for approval. Yeah. So it comes to you first guys. So imagine this here is there. Yeah. Um, so I can do that by removing this. And then I can add this, uh, the approval point, uh, I can get it from line. No, yeah. So that's uh, approval would be exact uh, GM, whatever it is in your business, let's just call it uh, approval one exec. Okay. Um, oh, I wanted this to go before the CFO, nevertheless. So as soon as it's submitted by the manager, which is this point here, it's going to come to you guys. And the interesting thing is um, in here, you can decide what ability of corrections that you want to make. So what you do is, for example, in the case of the engagement, you can go here and you can go to, I believe, advance, and you can say, I want the HR guys to be able to edit it. So it's editable for the HR guys. Uh, as you can see by default, it is the case. Um, so now you can say, it's, I would have thought it should be, um, read only by default nevertheless you can see the full control that you can have hide it completely make it read only or editable so in this case here what we're saying is the hr team here is able to edit this particular field you can see it's editable so in saying that now um if we go back to there the manager submits the uh, the form it's going to come to you no one has seen it yet you can make those corrections on those fields that you feel you need to make corrections. And then and only then it goes to the CFO and everybody else. And the beauty of it is it's all 
there's full accountability in there. The fact that you guys have access to this field and you've made editing to that field before it went for approval. So it's not as if there's a loophole in here and people say, oh, who changed this? And no one knows. It's all there and visible and flexible for you to be able to do that. Um, just uh, if you could just show, and it actually goes into the next part of the agenda, um, how to remove an employee from the org chart. Beautiful. So, so that's, that's coming next. Yep. Oh, we are sort of running out of time. Okay, I see what I mean, Jess, while you're rushing that. So we demonstrated the recruitment, the change of condition, and the offboarding. Um, Jess is re thinking maybe we do the offboarding. Yep. So let's find someone already there and cement it there. So... Um, under maybe this team here. Perfect. So this uh, Nicole, uh, Nicholas, I'm sorry, Newton. Um, they are in the season stakes property, front of house uh, department, and the uh, the position title is front of house manager. This is the customization information that I was talking about before when I did it and it didn't have any data, nothing came up. And that's the more, by the way. So if you click on more, more information will be coming up here and that will be maybe sensitive information you want only certain people to access. All right, so let's go back to what we want to do. We want to do offboarding. So I'm sure I've got an offboarding form. Yep, perfect. It comes up there. And what I need to do is that's how we customize it for the company. You can do whatever you want to do. We want to say when the effective date is going to be. So the last day is uh, Friday the 17th. Uh, reason for departure. That's what uh, we wanted in this account, how we customized it. Um, has a replacement been found? Uh, yes. Uh, end date. Uh, what's the end date versus effective date? Ignore this. This doesn't make sense, guys. I think it's just the effective date is what you would need. Um, and that's it. We're just going to submit without approval for now. And here you go. It says now offboarding is being approved. Um, and what you want to do now, if you really, uh, because it's been approved, uh, you don't need to send a pack, you don't need to do anything, manually complete the process, and it's uh, gone. Mm -hmm. So now it's vacant, and you can start to recruit into it if you want now. Not as if you couldn't, you can start to recruit even before they leave. So that effective date uh, um, could, be in, could have been in the future, which it was in the future. Um, and so yeah, I'm wondering why uh, the effective date was in the future. It should have uh, stayed in there and said that they are leaving. Uh, let's not get stuck on that, but that's how it should work, guys, yeah? All I was saying is you could be doing an offboarding process for Lisa, but at the same time start the recruitment. So I'll show you what I mean. And they both coexist. So I'm recruiting already for this as well as Lisa is on her way out. Um, and now you can see the same card turned into uh, two parts. Lisa's still there, but we're recruiting as well. And the same thing, this will keep updating the fact that it's been approved, et cetera, et cetera, until someone appears in here. And they can coexist until this effective date happened or whatever it is, until this person also, um, the effective date happened. Um, what is the highest number of employees that can be added under one position? Oh, unlimited. Unlimited, yeah. unlimited. there's no limit. Yeah. And uh, Vanessa was just, this is the aesthetics, mm -hmm. um, just on how you actually change the colors oh. in the org chart. I can't remember. I think it's in here somewhere. Yeah, um, edit, I think under edit. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Um, so you can change whichever colors. Yeah. Oh, red. Oops. I think that will do it, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, very good. Um, and then... Shama said, uh, do we need to offboard them manually or can the feed come overnight from the payroll system? Uh, uh, update, sorry, updating what? Uh, so the person, so we need to offboard them manually or can the feed come overnight from their payroll Well, well it depends. If you're doing the offboarding from the payroll, the idea is if you want to adopt the processes here, the, life, the employee life cycle, with us because it's got the approval and it's got the pack system for signing contracts and all that that's how we sort of uh, thought you would want to use it then you want to update the payroll when you remove someone from here they disappear from the org chart and your payroll system gets updated mm -hmm. so they're no longer employee that's the effective date etc yeah. um so yes we are happy to do two-way and bring data from the payroll but i'm not sure for this purpose if that's what it is but i guess the answer is yes but yeah yeah, yeah. 
Um, another one from Annalise. Uh, can you have two people attached to the same position in the org chart? Yeah. For example, when someone is on parental leave, uh, we want yeah. to show the other employee and then yeah. the one that's uh, yeah, hundred percent yeah. exactly what exactly we just did. Exactly what we just did. Yeah. yeah. So Lisa doesn't have to be undergoing any offboarding, which is this is the case here. Yeah. We haven't started any offboarding process. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So that's those. And we just had a couple of questions just before we end, um, just a bit earlier. Bear with me one sec. Um, what formats uh, will be able to be uploaded? Just mm -hmm. wondering uh, if position reviews, yeah. Word with tracked changes could occur. It's, it's an problem. Excel, literally, yeah. as a basic stuff. I, I just wish I can pull up the thing. I don't have Excel installed. It has to be in the cloud, and I've got to go to my email and some privacy and stuff. It's just think about it, very, very simple. You can download it even yourself. Get in touch with us, I'll send you the sample. Mm -hmm. Basically, it, it, just to start to think about it, um, uh, say uh, in this case, Eddie is uh, acting a marketing manager or Jesse, senior account manager, she reports to me. Uh, so Jesse Smith, senior account manager, uh, then the column would be after that um, uh, CEO because that's the position to whom she reports to. And then uh, uh, we recommend also to put Anwar Khalil, just in case that position is in unique, such as, as we said before, as there's multiple GMs or some of those um, managerial positions, they're not unique. So you, you support that with the name of that manager as well, not just their title. So just to go back again, Jessie Smith um, and her email address, as you can imagine, and, um, um, so name, last name, email, and, and uh, mobile number. And then now it becomes the reporting line uh, information. So she reports to the position of CEO, who is Anwar Khalil. So that's now six fields or so, six columns. And after that, uh, everything becomes um, uh, 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 non-mandatory. Optionally, you can bring even is she full time and how much is the salary and even custom information. Does she have a car? Blah, blah, blah as many custom data as you want. But as mandatory stuff, just to be able to provide the person, their position, who they report to, and the position of the person they report to. That's the only mandatory stuff, about six or seven fields, columns. Very, very straightforward. Uh, and then Annalise just said, can you please confirm the hiring manager can only see staff underneath them and managers more senior will be able to see more? Sure. Yeah. The, we, this would be the access control yeah. that we will customize for you. Whatever you need from the uh, who can see what and when and etc. We can uh, work with you on that. We've rolled out, if you can recall, maybe about eight months ago, a brand new, was, was a major project and caused a few disruptions. It was probably the most ambitious um, R&D project we have undergone. The entire role uh, system or access control was refurbished from scratch. So we can do whatever you like. You can create your own custom roles now with your own uh, data segregation and data. What, what's the word that we use? Um, yeah, let's call it data segregation. So two folds, you've got two layers from that point of view. You've got the data set, you've got the role and you've got the data segregation when they're combined together, they provide literally the ultimate access control. Yep, and you can always reach out to myself uh, if you want to know a little bit more about that and how that yep. works. Yep. And the beauty of it is that's part of the trial. Yeah. We'll be able to bring your own data, as you can see, quite simple. Even if you didn't have the data for the trial, based on what I just said, you know, seven, seven columns, you can create manually 20, 30 of those for the purpose of importing real data from your company. And we can import it for you and you can start to run these processes and uh, 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 do proof of concept on the control. And as I said, we can do that from a brand new account. So you don't need to worry about creating issues in your account or complexities and stuff that you don't need. We'll do it from a brand new account, like Sandbox, that you can just dump it or just keep open. Yeah, Annalise. Annalise says that's great. Um, Vanessa had a question. Uh, we work with position numbers as we have multiple positions. Example, five counselor positions, each will have their own unique position number. Uh, will there ever be a position number field created that we will be able to then make yep. as a, a visible node? 100%. You can surface it. We've already got a couple of clients yeah. that wanted that and did that. That's yeah. true, yeah. 100%. Yeah, that's very good. Um, any other questions, please just put it into the chat there. Oh, uh, Vanessa was just wondering if you can just show an example of that. 
uh, the well, it, it would be surfaced. We import it yeah. uh, in the Excel spreadsheet. There'll be position number, and it gets imported. And then it's just a matter of surface, like anything else. When you're customizing the surfacing here, um, it would appear because it's uh, it's a field that was it's a custom field, and then you just choose to surface it. Um, I, I know I respect the question, but believe me, there's nothing different in a sense to for for that. Yeah. Um, we will make it happen regardless. Yeah, Vanessa, <laughs> Vanessa just reach out to myself um, and we can go through that offline. That's fine. Yeah. Um, and then Agnes had a question. Are we able to turn off uh, rounding the remuneration section? Uh, in the remuneration? The yeah. Round, yeah. Um, it's very interesting. Very. It, it, oh, turning off the rounding? Yeah, or she just on? Uh, wondered if you can uh, turn off the rounding. So meaning you want the full four decimal places to appear everywhere? So how, I, get, I think what she means is how it rounds up to a certain number. Is that what you mean, Agnes? Uh, at least two decimal places. Yep. Yeah. At least. We, by default, everything is four decimal places. Let me just go there quickly. Um, so if I'm doing the waiter here, if I can edit it, I mean. Yeah. So it's all, as you can see, all the uh, pay data is four decimal places. But here's the interesting thing. In the contract, when you're pulling that data directly into the contract, we allow you, we have multiple tags. We have, uh, let's say for each of those, say the casual rate or the salary, you can choose the four decimal places version of it or the rounded to two decimal places. In the contract, it's up to you. It's a choice of on a per company basis. But the way we store the data in the database is always four for maximum accuracy. But when you're pulling it out in the contract, you have the choice how you're going to present it, in other words, to the employees or the candidates. It's actually quite impressive. I can show you quickly exactly what I mean. Um, the, if I go to PAX, don't worry about what I'm doing for a moment until I get to what I want to show you. Uh, what was the form that we just used? Um, form. If I go to the engagement here, where all the data about the pay data is holding, when I want to copy the tag to insert in my contract, here's all the options. I'm just going to zoom on this area a little that uh, are available for you. Which one is that? Sorry, the zooming is just making it a little confusing. So for example, the final salary, there's two versions. Do you want the two decimal places or you want the four? The final rate, two or the four, et cetera, et cetera. That final rate could be either casual or the standard, depending on is it part-time, is it casual, it's intelligent, it knows straight away. But nevertheless, for the, the, the money, from a money point of view, you decide whether you want to present to the end user, in this case, the candidate, uh, the employee, um, the two or four decimal places. She, she said she just tried it and um, when she was setting it up and she goes, I think it was the salary figure that kept rounding to the dollar. Ah, meaning uh, the decimal place is gone completely. Oh, yeah. that would be an error. If that's the case, we will fix it overnight. Yeah, Agnes I'm very, very surprised, but consider it done. Can you please reach out uh, to Jess? Just call us on the mobile, either me or Jess. Or let, let's just uh, jump on a call, see it in action, and get it sorted. We'll do that, she says. Very good. All right, well, we're eight minutes over time. So if there's any more questions that anybody has, Looking good. That was uh, good, guys. We covered a lot. The only thing we wanted to cover is the change of condition. It makes it's really the same thing. You go in here and you start you start the change of condition. It's actually a very impressive piece because we show you who the employee is, etc. But also we show you the the current uh, um, data for the employee and the proposed changes. So we put them side by side. So for example, uh, had this person been, uh, um, had any pay data imported against them? So it would have been, let's say, showing you something like that. Imagine this employee has the data. Uh, sorry. So we show you that this person now is on, uh, oh, what happened? Sorry. Ah, um, yeah. 
it's just not showing me the, the, the current remuneration here, although it's picked it up. And uh, then you're able to say, okay, I want to change that to 70. So they are on 60 and the proposed changes is the fact that um, we are given a pay rise to 70,000. Let's say that's really the change. Um, so you see, oh, now they come up. So you've seen them side by side. Currently they are on um, 60,000 and we're proposing to change them to 70,000. The same with the position. If the position is changing, you're able to change it. Um, any of the information, when you're setting up this form, this change of condition approval form, you're able to say these are the things that we change. And therefore, for those things, we want to show the current state of play and what are we proposing to change them to. So when it goes to the approval, it's not your standard form for request to hire, which is just a linear, um, because it's all about what we are intending to recruit. This is about, this is an existing employee, here's who they are, who they report to, etc. They are currently on this, we want to change it to that. It's very actually the most complex thing that we did uh, from the employee life cycle by far compared to anything else. You can do all that from the org chart now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now if we exit this, uh, it'll indicate there's a change of condition happening. And we've created a separate uh, page for the life cycle that shows you all those processes. So in this case, we've got the thing that we just started, the change of condition is in progress, the uh, offboarding that we did, the crossboarding, etc. Uh, they are all in here and shows you the effective date and, and, and all that. This page is particularly interesting if you don't want the managers for some reason to be doing that from the org chart, they can come here to this page and they can only see their own processes if they have indicated any change of conditions or offboarding, they will see them, if any, and they're able to start it from here. Also, you're able to start the change of conditions from the employee itself. So in the employee database, um, if I'm in this employee, I can start it from here. I want to do a change of condition, I want to do offboarding, etc. It's the same thing. It picks up the form and you go from there. And then that will update the org chart in real time. That's right. And that will push the changes to the org chart as well. Yeah. So uh, it depends how you want to use it from the data access point of view and a number of things. We've got tons of flexibility. We'll be working with a number of clients to really give them that sort of flexibility that they need at the time. And things can change in the future. Then they can do things differently in, say, in three months or in 12 months' time. Yep. But nevertheless, we never compromise on the single source of truth concept. That never, ever is compromised on, no matter how you want to use it. Was the full? Yep. Very good. I guess um, if there's no more questions, uh, please do reach out to myself um, through email or a call if you want to learn more about um, the org chart, have a trial, anything of sort, and uh, we can get that sorted for you. Yep. We'd love to work with you on a trial, guys. Um, and uh, as I said, we'll help you to import your own data or a, a fraction of your data, yep. whichever. Uh, is is quick quick on very good appreciate your time guys love to talk to you as jess mentioned reach out to jess or even to myself and i'll bring jess into the call clearly um and we would love to help you and uh work with you and learn from you as well about all these great ideas every single feature i've just mentioned really started by some client and what we're good at is finding solutions but we're certainly not inventing the need for this solution it's all coming from you guys and and we really appreciate it always appreciated it so have a great day and talk to you soon take care guys thank you ciao